So I'm here in Huntington Beach, California, and I want to test street shooting with a very budget friendly lens by Viltrox. It's a 20 millimeter, 2.8 lens. It is a prime lens and it retails for like $159, which is going to be like a huge budget steal. But if you're a newer content creator, you're making YouTube content, and you're making um, any kind of like photography, like just get starting out, and you're using like a budget camera like the Nikon C30, or even if you're using like a used camera like a Nikon C6, then this is going to be the lens for you. Now, it comes in both E mount and Z mount and L mount, I believe. You can double check on the Viltrox website, but I wanted to kind of show you just how it actually works out because I think that a lot of people who don't typically look at like fourth part fourth party glasses a lot of people call it only because of the fact that it's usually like shipped out to china and it doesn't always have like the best glass but i've come to realize that i found that you can start with the most basic of like lenses just to start out with something cheap it's not used it's new but you can get some really cool shots so a 20 millimeter is going to be really good for those if you're using a crop sensor it'll act like a 28 or 35 ish depending on your crop ratio. So it'd be really good for street photography. Even on a full frame, it's gonna be good wide photography wise. So I'm gonna put that to the test today. Let's take a look. One of the first things that you can see here, I mean, it's pretty compact. Even with the lens hood, it is definitely tiny for the body itself. Um, but it works natively. And like I said before, it has autofocus. So that's gonna definitely be a key thing. Now 2.8, with aperture, I believe it's an 11 blade aperture. Editor Joe can correct that, but it's gonna get a lot of good bokeh, especially if you're doing any kind of like portrait shots versus um, using like a kit lens, which starts at like 3.5 most of the times. So you're gonna get some good depth of field, some stuff out of focus, which is gonna make it look nice. So let's actually shoot some stuff. So this is video test with the Nikon Z6, shooting 4K 30. I think I'm shooting at an ISO of 100, shutter speed of 1 over 2000, because I don't have an ND filter. Um, image stabilization wise, because there's no built in stabilization to itself, because obviously it's a cheaper lens, that Z6 has its own IBIS, which helps dramatically. But for something like, uh, what do you call it, like a Z30 or a lower end camera that doesn't have built in IBIS, you're not probably going to have the same functionality you're not functional with the same like, uh, results that's what i'm trying to say you may not have the same results uh, so it really just depends on the body you have but as far as boca wide video it's too far pain. it's not too bad i guess i got a cut picture of that but whatever i don't care about lambos okay so i didn't pay enough for my timing on my meter or whatever so i'm gonna head back home we're gonna take a look at some of these photos let's go so now that i have my setup I'm using my streaming setup for this. Let me go ahead and open up Lightroom here. And let's take a look at some of these photos that I got. So here's the first one I got. Now, one thing I, no I noticed off the bat was that Adobe Lightroom actually recognizes the lens. So the metadata of the lens is being recorded. So you can see here, it's actually recording that it was done on my Viltrox autofocusing 22.8Z. So that's off the rip. Probably one of the coolest things. So these are all just loaded fresh. I haven't done any editing. There's one thing I do notice, you see right here is actual um, vignette. So because it's a uh, 20 millimeter, you will do see some of that vignette on this outside. There we go. Look at the profile correction. It actually recognizes, Adobe recognizes it. It has automatic correction. That's what I was missing. Look at that before and after. So here's the before. So you see the vignette and all that stuff and then the Adobe correction. So it does help it out quite a bit. So here's one I captured the flags. I'm trying to capture a lot of different color and different vibrancy, right? So that way we can really kind of see how it is. I mean, you can see it in the detail here, like it pop, it gets a lot of color. It does get soft though, once you really kind of zoom, like I'm, I'm pixel beeping, right? But so here's an interesting shot. So my people are focused here. If I go to 100, they're pretty sharp. If I zoom in tighter, like you can see it's still, you know, it's, again, it's a 20 millimeter lens. <laughs> like we're asking for a lot, but like any kind of print, that would be fine. Overall, I think the lens gets the job done. Again, this is 
we're talking uh, under $200 lens, $158, and you're getting like these types of results. It's pretty amazing, to be quite honest. This was a kind of cool shot. I want to show you the, the bokeh. It has seven aperture blades, but it does get a decent bokeh on here. So you can see here, I actually dropped this really down my ISO, but, and I was focusing on here. So it's pretty, sh honestly, sharp for a portrait. Like here's 300 and it's nailing it. Like, of course I had to use my, I had to use um, 3D tracking to get this. But look at like the focus, the tack sharpness of the focus. It's actually almost spot on if I pixel peep it. Actually, look at the bokeh, it's not bad. Like your stuff that's still, like that's still re legible, right? That's still, the piece dog sign is still legible, but it, everything else is pretty blown out. It's not too bad. Of course, distance wise, I was probably a good two and a half feet away from it. So it wasn't too bad. So this, I didn't expose for the background, which was kind of like my bad, but. Oh, that's the shot right there. That one right there with the wide eyes. Oh. All right, so let's play with it here. I gotta do lens correction. Oh my God. This is adorable. <laughs> I took this photo. Shut up. Okay. I'm gonna, hold up. I'm partially colorblind. So if you ever wonder like, oh, is things maybe not look as color corrected? I am partially colorblind. I suffer from deutropenia and I have issues with reds, greens, browns, and sometimes some hints of blue. So for me, editing photos has always been a challenge. So I kind of have to really rely on my camera <laughs> to get the shot. So if it looks off, I'm apologizing right now, but like, it just feels natural to me that this is the right colors. It may be the wrong colors, but it feels right to me. Leave in the comments if this is the wrong color. If you suffer from, um, if you actually suffer from a color blindness like I do, then leave, like uh, use I think the hearts, you could do the, uh, the, do like the blue heart or whatever you think the blue heart is <laughs> that tells me, hey, I suffer from color blindness as well. All right, let's go back. A little more scenery shots. Again, this is just me kind of messing around. <laughs> Got this shot. Oh, that's 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 a nice. That's nice. I'm in the wrong business. I gotta go back to photography. So this is more like portrait. If I was doing like a full like a headshot portrait, like when you have your subject close to you, because I believe it's about here. Let me double check the website. So the closest get, you can get to your subject is seven and a half inches. So you can see here how well the bokeh actually works on a subject at that distance. And I was just holding it my, I was honestly holding it. Actually, when I, this is from the video. So I was just arm's length, honestly. And it does a pretty good job. Like for video wise, I actually like how it does for video. I think I got another shot here. Yeah, this one. Let me look. I mean, the problem is Nikon, I love Nikon, but sometimes it just doesn't always like hit, especially if you're being quick with it. But I mean, for the most part, it's pretty in in focus. So we'll check, I mean, it's a 20 millimeter. So lines wise, it's gonna be, I mean, it's pretty dead on for the most part. That's it, and then me testing the bokeh. So here's the thing, again, the bokeh, when you're doing a portrait, I mean, the, it, it's blurry as hell. With videos though, like I'll show you how it looks with video. I'm now back home and I have my Z30 hooked up to the Viltrox lens. Now, because it's a crop sensor, it's taken from a 20 millimeter to like a 28 millimeter, which is still a pretty wide aperture. Like I'm holding this arm's length away, right? Um, one of the different things is because like again, the Z30 doesn't have built-in uh, stabilization. And this lens doesn't have it either. So by me moving around, you're gonna see a lot of like handshake or hand movements. But again, that's because I want to demonstrate just how it looks on the different bodies. You can see even with the bokeh itself, we're on the full frame, you get a lot more bokeh. So now we're on the Nikon Z6, same lens, same arm distance. And you're getting the full frame sensor 
20 millimeters, 2.8 aperture, right? Yep. At the 2.8 aperture, same ISO, same shutter speed. And you can see the difference between the bokeh. Hopefully. Maybe you do, maybe you don't. But you get a couple different examples. Of course, you do have IBIS, which is game changer for vlogging. But this camera is much lighter than that camera. So it is what it is. Really quick, I just want to take a quick moment to shout out Alexis MMEF and Jonathan Ramsey. I see both made it to the end of my last video, and honestly, I appreciate it, because if it wasn't for viewers like you, I probably wouldn't be making videos. So, from the bottom of my heart, thank you. I appreciate it. Now let's get back to the video. I'm using natural light today, so I don't have my big studio light, but that's fine, because I want to show you just what it looks like having the camera stationary with this Viltrox lens. So, I just have my natural window, and I have my two key lights going on over here. And that's it, it's got some natural light coming in from like other rooms and stuff like that. But this lens, uh, I'm using auto white balance, so there's nothing too crazy going on as far as with the camera. I mean, it to me, it looks pretty stellar. And I think this is the perfect lens, whether you have a crop sensor or um, a full frame sensor for vlogging, because like for YouTube style, you know, single sit down interview style content and things like that, it looks crisp, it looks clean, and again, this thing only sells for $158. So I made a mistake earlier, it's only available for the Z mount and the E mount. No L mount for this one, so it's just E and Z. So if you're a Sony or a Nikon creator, you now have a very affordable option of a lens that's not going to break your bank. So you could get the ultimate like YouTube style content or even streaming style content for under a grand with a body like this, which normally retails between like 650 if it's on sale to like $800, and then plus $158 lens, you have something perfect for street photography, for portraits, and for video work, like YouTube and Twitch streaming and stuff like that. Like this is the perfect like starting lens. Now, if you're a bigger professional and you're, that photography is your job, right? You're going to always want to get like the best of the best with honors kinds of lens. But, and this is where I say but, if you are a beginner creator, like just the entry level now is so much cheaper. Like it's insane what you could get for such a little value. Like Viltrox has a ton of glass for both Sony and Nikon cameras that... They just recently had the 20 millimeter 2.8, which actually this is what this is. It came out, where is it here? A brand new 56 millimeter 1.7. That's like a 85 equivalent on a full frame. That, that's for an actual crop sensor, right? It starts at $140. Like, <laughs> Viltrox, look, I'm testing the how close I could get because it says I could get close, right, for focus. Viltrox, if you're out there, I want to review more of these lenses because I think a lot of creators out there can really benefit from this type of glass. So look, like how, look how fast, like it's refocusing and it's silent. Do you hear it? Viltrox, call me up, bro. Call me. I'm telling you. I'm, I, I love it. So I want to know your thoughts. What do you think about the content, how all this was shot? Do you think it was good? Do you think it was good enough? Do you think it was just shitty and just not worth it? My personal opinion, 100% it is worth it. Like, penny for penny, dollar for dollar, if you are a new creator, affording some of that best gear and being able to buy it and go broke is not going to make your content. But being able to get good enough and just there at a fraction of the cost, yeah. You only sets you up for success and be able to practice your craft even more. So I personally feel that, you know, five years ago, I would have never considered a brand like Viltrox. There are other parties out there like Menke and TT Artisan or Seven Artisan. I would have never considered those lenses. But seeing what's being created today in 2024, I'm honestly second guessing half the kit I have. Like I have ranges of first party glass and before it used to be well sigma and tamron were the best of the best third parties but these other brands like i'm 
decently surprised. And this whole video is being shot besides, well, the intro. The intro wasn't shot on it because I was using my kit lens. Approximately 90% of this video was shot on the Viltrox lens. I'll just let that be known. For what this can do, there's your proof. If you want to know more about this lens, let me know. I don't have an affiliate link, but you can go ahead and go to ViltroxUSA.com. Yep, actually no, it's ViltroxStore.com. And you can check out all their available lenses. And Viltrox, if you're watching this, call me up because I think I could test a lot more of your lenses. I'm just saying. We could be friends. <laughs> all right, I'm Joe. This is Matsu XL, and as always, catch you guys next time. Peace.